Since we did an episode on challenge coins, we received quite a few from viewers. They all represent history in their own unique way, and we appreciate them all. One of the first to come in was this coin, which commemorates a reunion of Vietnam veterans. U.S. combat activities were suspended in Vietnam in January 1973, meaning that the youngest veterans of the Vietnam War are today in their 60s, and so we have reached the point where reunions such as these are getting smaller and smaller. There's actually a significant amount of disagreement over how many Vietnam veterans are left alive today, and those disagreements tend to focus on the definition of what constitutes a Vietnam veteran as opposed to a Vietnam-era veteran. But it is safe to say that time is taking its toll, and coins like this will become all the more valuable to the people who are still able to attend the reunions. And all of us need to understand that the history and experiences of a generation that made enormous sacrifices in our behalf is being lost, and that we only have a finite amount of time to record those personal experiences. The top of this coin, it says, Brothers Forever. And that is a poignant statement about what these men experienced in the war. I won't use this name because I don't have permission, I don't want to intrude on his privacy, but I am very grateful to the person who gifted us this coin and the heroism it represents. To the Vietnam veterans represented on this coin, you are heroes. Your nation thanks you for your service. The obverse of the coin gives some more detail. There's a fantastic picture of a flaming bird, the name Firebirds, and the motto, You Call, We Kill. Firebirds is a call sign, a concept that can be confusing. <laughs> if you watch Top Gun, you know call signs like Maverick and Iceman. Aviation call signs are somewhat different than unit call signs, but it's important to note that while they always seem cool in the movies, actual pilots report that it can be far less so in the real world, as the military entertainment website for veterans We Are the Mighty explains. For example, if you eat a Pop-Tart one time in front of another pilot, your call sign is now forever Pop-Tart. Good going, Pop-Tart. That's your call sign to the end of time. The Firebirds were an aviation unit, but Firebird is not a call sign like the pilots of Top Gun. According to the official website of the U.S. Army, the concept of call signs dates back to the use of the telegraph in the 19th century. Short identifiers were adopted to distinguish between specific railroad stations and operators as they communicated over a single line. This practice was inherited into radio and later wireless communication practices. The use of call signs speeds radio communication, makes it more difficult for enemies to intercept and decode transmissions. Unlike the Top Gun pilots, call signs are actually assigned to units and subunits. In this case, the call signs were chosen when the unit, then A Company, the 501st Aviation Battalion, shipped out from Vietnam. The company became the 71st Aviation Company in September 1966. While the unit was redesignated some during the war, the call signs remained the same. The call sign would be followed by a number, or in this case, two numbers. Firebird 96, and the numbers were always pronounced separately, number 96, was the commander of the 9th platoon. Six always meant the platoon commander, and went with the commander, not the particular aircraft. A number other than six meant a specific aircraft commander. For example, Firebird 91 was a commander of a specific aircraft. In January 1970, it was the call sign of Captain Herbert C. Crosby of Donaldsonville, Georgia, whose UNC Huey helicopter went down due to bad weather over Kwangnam Province while returning to their base at Chulai. A search was unable to find the crash, and Captain Crosby and three members of his crew were listed as missing in action. The remains were repatriated in 1994, but not positively identified until the 2000s, the last in 2010. A website called Firebird 91 is maintained by Crosby's sister. It is a loving tribute to the captain. Check it out. It's worth your time. The captain was a hero who died for his country, and it's a stark statement about both the war and the way the nation has come to fully appreciate the veterans of that war, that his remains were recovered and identified so that he could be buried with appropriate honors, 36 years after Firebird 9-1 went down. Captain Crosby's call sign started with a 9, which would suggest that it was the 9th platoon, but it wasn't. It was the 3rd platoon. There were only 3 platoons, in addition to the company headquarters and support in the 71st uh, AHC. Call signs for the first two platoons started with 1 and 2, but the third platoon used call sign 9. This represented the different roles between the two and tells us something about the assault helicopter companies used in the Vietnam War. Assault helicopter companies don't seem to be as well known as the Air Cavalry, which became iconic from a scene in the movie Apocalypse Now where they make their attack accompanied by Wagner's Ride of the Valkyries. The Air Cavalry was, however, different from assault helicopter companies, although the two were similar. In short, both assault helicopter companies and air cavalry troops conducted visual reconnaissance and assault, that is, transporting troops into combat. But reconnaissance was the primary role of the air cavalry, while assaults were the primary role of the assault helicopter companies. 
The idea for both was a relatively new concept whose doctrine and tactics were developed during the war in Vietnam. The first helicopter companies were deployed to Vietnam in December 1961 with the Army's 8th and 57th Transportation Companies in support of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam troops. The companies were equipped with the tandem rotor Piaseki CH-21, officially named the Shawnee, but generally called the Flying Banana for obvious reasons. The French had attempted to arm the CH-21 as a ground attack helicopter during the 1954-62 Algerian War, but had found that they lacked maneuverability needed for the role. When the first units were sent to Vietnam, they were seen strictly as light troop transports and, not were, and were not armed except for door guns. But the North Vietnamese Army and Viet Cong ground forces produced a surprising anti-air capability, and the CH-21 proved to be vulnerable. In fact, the first U.S. casualties of the Vietnam War were aviators whose CH-21 was shot down in July of 1962. It was quickly realized that helicopters needed gun support, and various weapons were mounted to CH-21s to act as gunships, and the tactics for things like combat assault and close air support were developed. This experience led to the creation of assault helicopter companies and air cavalry. The CH-21, however, was not the best platform. Not only were its fuel lines and control cables unprotected, making it particularly vulnerable to fire, but the design had been built for cold climates. In fact, it started as an Arctic rescue helicopter, and performance in the climate of Southeast Asia was always relatively poor. By 1962, the CH-21 started to be replaced with the new Bell H-1. Marines also used assault helicopters, although before the arrival of the Bell H-1, they preferred the Sikorsky S-34 to the CH-21. Bell UH-1 was the first turbine-powered helicopter produced for the U.S. military. The model was originally designated HU-1, and while the official nickname was Iroquois, they were pretty much universally called Hueys, and they became virtually synonymous with the war in Vietnam. There were several models of Hueys. The first deployed to Vietnam were for medical evacuation, but in general there were two types. Helicopters optimized for carrying troops were called slicks. It often used the UH-1D and H models, which had longer fuselages and more load-carrying capacity once they became available. On delivery, the model advertised the ability to carry 13 troops, although that number was not actually possible in the hot air of Southeast Asia. They had flexible door guns, but no outside weapons attached, which some claim was the genesis of the nickname, Slicks. As the Slicks were usually under fire, other Hueys were optimized as gunships to provide fire support. At first, the weapons were added in theater. Hueys mounted with guns were called Cobras, while those mounted with rockets were called Frogs or Hogs. Eventually, Hueys were mounted with a wide array of weapons. The Army preferred rate of fire, one of them to simply throw a whole lot of hot metal at the enemy. Some gunships were replaced by the AH-1 Cobra, really a variation of the Huey, in that it used the same engine, transmission, and rotor system, starting in 1967, but the gunships of the 71st were never replaced. While there was overlap, the Air Cavalry and the Assault Helicopter Companies were equipped differently, representing their different roles. A typical air cavalry troop would have one platoon of slicks, one platoon of guns, and one platoon of scout helicopters like the Hughes 086, which was officially called a Cayuse, but generally referred to as a Loach, from the designation Light Observation Helicopter, or LOH. This optimized the troop for visual reconnaissance. Scouts accompanied by gunships would move in until contact with the enemy was made, and then slicks would bring in troops, usually or organic to the unit, to exploit the contact, and the guns would provide fire support. Assault helicopter companies instead had two platoons of slicks and one platoon of guns. That thus allowed them to make larger assaults, deliver more troops, their primary job. The assault helicopter companies were also better equipped to play utility roles like aerial resupply of troops in the field, medical evacuation, ground fire support for troops engaged in combat, liaison, and command and control. An independent assault helicopter company like the 71st typically included about 30 helicopters, 10 each in the two slick platoons, 8 gunships, and a couple assigned to headquarters or maintenance. While Apocalypse Now may have convinced you that most helicopters in Vietnam were firing rockets, in fact, the assault helicopter companies outnumbered the air cavalry units by about two to one. Combat assault, delivering troops into action, was the primary way that helicopters were used in Vietnam. The helicopters fit different ways into the order of battle. The assault helicopter companies were flexible units that could be assigned to support different units or operations, but usually reported through the 1st Aviation Brigade, which was, in fact, the single largest U.S. Army aviation unit ever formed. But there were also divisional assault helicopter battalions that had full companies of slicks and guns, rather than the two platoons of slicks to one platoon of guns model. Which takes us back to this coin. The 71st was an assault helicopter company, and when they left Fort Benning on November 27, 1964, bound for the Bien Ho Air Base in Vietnam, they chose their call signs. The slicks, platoons 1 and 2, were called the Rattlers, taken from the mascot of Captain Cliff Olenberger's alma mater at St. Mary's University at San Antonio. The gunship platoon chose the name Firebirds, 
taken from a ballet written by Igor Stravinsky. Captain Olenberger designed the patch for both. A maintenance platoon was also attached using the call sign Snake Doctor. Unit mottos are common and used by all services, but most are unofficial, and You Call, We Kill appears to be one of those. The coin also says Summer of 69. The note that came with it said that the summer was so deadly that survivors of the platoon held numerous reunions since after the war. Eleven members of the 71st were killed in action that year. According to their Veteran Association website, in 1969, 95 of the company's helicopters were damaged, with a total loss of nine. The company flew 88,638 sorties over 22,585 flight hours, carrying 135,378 passengers and moving 6,295 tons of cargo. The unit also completed 110 emergency medical evacuations that year. It was a typical year. The 71st AHC participated in some of the most significant operations of the war between 1964 and when the unit stood down in September 1971, including the 1967 Task Force Oregon Plan, the massive 1969 Operation Dewey Canyon, and Operations Dewey Canyon 2 and Lam Son 719 in 1971. The largest operations of the war. The unit description of the Army Veterans Finder page explains that the 71st proudly led the way establishing the traditions of Army aviation and helped write the Bible on air assault. The unit stood down in September 1971. To get an idea what the Firebirds and the Rattlers faced, 7,013 Bell UH-1 Huey helicopters served in Vietnam, and of those, 3,305 were destroyed. 1,074 Huey helicopter pilots and 1,103 other crew members died in the war. This coin represents a distinguished service. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe.